So this is a uh, German 88 millimeter um, shell fragment that a friend of mine, who's German, uh, dug up somewhere in the Black Forest. And he's a metal detector. And he goes out and digs up stuff all the time. A lot of times he'll find live shells and he has to uh, get them diffused. Uh, anyway, he dug this up, this big fragment, and wondered if I could make a knife out of it. And I don't know. Um, so we have to do an experiment. And basically what I need to do is take a small piece of this and forge it flat and then see if I can harden it. If I can harden it, then I can make a knife out of it. Um, I just want to take a small piece because I don't want to um, take the whole shell and, and forge it flat because if I can't uh, harden it, then I want to keep it and put it in my office. Um, there's a part here that um, has been drilled into uh, I don't know, by somebody else. And so I'm just going to take and, and uh, take a little piece of metal off there. Now, you can see, interesting, uh, this is threaded down here, and I believe that's brass kind of stuck in the threads here and there. And then I don't know if it'll show up on film or not, but you can see on the outside these lines. And I'm assuming that's where, uh, once the shell was made, they took it and lathed it to get it to the right um, dimensions for the for the gun. Um, I have no idea if this is hardenable steel or not. I'd say there's a chance uh, because doing a little research, the 88s were used um, both as anti-aircraft and as anti-tank rounds. And if this is an anti-tank round, there's a chance that they would have used uh, hardened steel for it, but I don't know. I'm not a weapons expert, so we'll do an experiment. I apologize about the lighting here. Because of where my vice is situated, there's no way I can shoot this without being at backlit right now, unless I want to wait till the middle of the night, which I don't. So, first thing I'm going to do is just use this hacksaw to cut a piece of this out. See if we can get it going without blowing me up. metal in there. Now this is interesting. It is, it's giving off uh, some sort of a color as it's heating up there, like a yellowish, orangish uh, as the flame hits it. And I haven't seen that before uh, when forging various metals. So maybe there's something different about the composition of this metal. So one problem I'm going to have is that I, that's too small of a piece for me to grab and hammer at the same time. So I'm going to have to do this very carefully. Basically all I need to do is get this flat or flatter than it currently is so that I can um, surface grind it a little bit uh, and then uh, uh, run it through an RC tester. Let's give it another go here. guess is that's about as flat as I'm going to get it. Maybe whack it a couple times on this side. Now what I've done um, is I've put it back into this hot forge and I'm going to let it slowly come to room temperature as that forge cools off. And what I'm trying to do there is kind of a backyard annealing process. Uh, without knowing the exact composition of the steel, which is frankly impossible, um, it's hard to know exactly what to do, so I'm just doing my best guess here. Um, one reason it's impossible to know what kind of steel that is, is it depends on what was available at the time the shell was made and where it was made. Now remember this was wartime Germany, and of course they would have shortages and all sorts of other things, and the fact that that was giving off a weird glow um, as I was heating it tells me that um, maybe it's not your standard stuff. Hopefully it is high carbon steel though. We'll see. So here's our piece. I was able to flatten it a little bit, um, but in order to test this, what I need to do is I need to kind of surface grind this so that it's flat on um, both sides here. So what I've done here 
is I've just created a basically a flat surface um, that doesn't have any of that you know oxidation on it so that I can be sure I'm testing the metal and not um, you know something some surface contaminant or something like that and so we do three turns roughly and then we load it one two three four five and then unload it and this gives me um, an idea that the base just without heat treating this metal um, reads at 18 on the um, dial so the RC for this untreated is 18 so here's our piece of metal that we're going to test and um, I there's no way to know what kind of metal this is but my guess is it's some sort of high carbon steel and most of the high carbon steels if you bring them up to between 1450 and 1500 degrees and hold them there for a bit then dunk it in oil it'll harden so we'll give this a test got a heat treat oven here that does it pretty precisely so we're going to do a program one segment uh, heat it up really quickly up to 1500 degrees I'm going to hold it at 20 minutes okay so there's that and now I will put this little piece of metal in the heat treat oven there positioning it so that I can grab it and we'll heat it up And it started. Time will tell. All right, let's give it a shot. There it is. Boom. Into the oil it goes. All right. As before, I ground uh, away the surface stuff. And let's see if, if we hardened it at all. One, two... Three. So we started at 18, and where are we at now? One, one, two, three, four, five. Ah, oh, yeah, 51. Um, so yes, you can harden this stuff. So yes, I can make a knife out of it. So let's get started. Now I know this is hardenable. So I'm going to take and cut like this and take half of this and uh, forge it into a knife. All right, there it is. The last time it'll ever be in that form. Time to make a knife. So I've drawn out a tang. Um, the German knife laws specify that you can only have about a four inch, four and a half inch blade or so. So that's what I'm planning. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to surface grind some of this 
and define where the tang starts and stops a little bit better. And then I will come back and forge in uh, the tip and try to forge in uh, some bevels. So I want to I want to surface grind this a bit, um, thin it down. This is like over a centimeter thick, and it's proved actually fairly difficult to move this metal around. Um, so I'm going to thin it thin it up a little bit. I can't use much of this stuff anyway. Uh, and then um, what I need to do is form a a tip and try to get. Um, try to get some sort of a blade shape out of this. Uh, I may end up having to draw this tang out a little bit more too, but I won't know any of that until I um, clean this up a bit. So I've ground um, the surface down a bit. You can see those are the threads that were still at the bottom of the, of the, uh, of the shell. And this was towards the top. Um, so what I have to do now is I need to draw this tang out a little bit further. I don't think that's long enough for what I want to do for the handle. So I'll draw that out and then the next thing I need to do is pound this down so that I can make the bevels um, and uh, I suppose we should get started. What I'm going to try to do now is just one last little kind of go over it and try to make sure that all everything's basically straight, or at least as straight as I can make it, and flat. Um, because the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to anneal this, which, as I talked about earlier, means heat it up in the oven to uh, a critical temperature. In this case, I'm going to say. 1500 degrees since that's where that's the temperature I was able to get it to harden at earlier and then I'm going to cool it down very slowly back to room temperature and the purpose behind that is to relieve all this stress that I've introduced in that you can see how much the blade turned and I'm going to have to correct some of that by grinding uh, but I've got a real good start on a knife um, and we shall see how this all uh, turns out. Now, unfortunately, there's a lot of handwork to be done. Um, like, for instance, getting this uh, area right here correct um, so that a guard can sit in there. So now uh, what I'm doing is I'm taking and uh, grinding the surface um, so that this area gets uh, nice and flat. Uh, and hopefully taking some of these tool mics out. And that works better if you've got one of these magnet things to hold it. Um, trying to hold that up against there with your fingers is kind of a bad idea. I have it uh, nice and flat. You can see out towards the end here those marks. Those were the threads um, from the shell. And now, unfortunately, what I have to do is the part that I hate. And that's make a guard out of this piece of brass. Um, basically you have to 
you know, get a, a hole in this brass that you can, so you can slide it like this all the way up. Um, I hate this part. Now, when you get the guard to this point where it'll slide to there, um, you know, basically what I did was drilled a hole and widened it. Uh, now it's all file work with one of these jeweler's files um, to get it so that it'll slide up here and not have any uh, extra room around there. You actually want it so that you have to tap it on a little bit um, at the end. So it fits pretty well. Um, there is a little bit of a gap there. I'm going to have to work just a little bit more to get that as a little bit closer. Um, I don't have to do much. I think remove a little steel right there using a little file. And then what I'll do is I'll drill a hole all the way through the guard, all the way through the tang, um, eighth inch in diameter so that I can put a uh, mosaic pin in there to hold everything in place um, for assembly. And it also adds like a little interest. Now I want to take and shape the guard a little bit. So there it is with the guard shaped. I mean, I'll have to do a little bit more when it's time to do the uh, final stuff. Um, probably I'll make this dip back just a little bit there. Um, I do like to have a lip of um, this going above the top just visually. And I got a little bit, uh, little bit close there. I probably should have made this stick out a little bit further at the top. Um, so I'll bring this down just a touch. Um, but now it will be time to put the bevels in. To grind the bevels, um, I use this thing, it's called a bubble jig. And basically what it lets you do, if you keep that bubble in the middle, is set a consistent grind angle. So I've set this one to 12 degrees. And I'm going to grind a 12 degree bevel uh, on the top here to create kind of a false edge or swedge. Um, and you'll notice that... Uh, the that this blade is angled not um, perpendicular but a little bit off and that's so that this surface here these two points are actually perpendicular to the uh, um, front there so that I can make a nice uh, grind line along this way Now it's time to grind in the primary bevels and you'll notice that again the uh, spine of this blade is not perpendicular to the handle and that's so that if I hold the handle perpendicular to the blade the grind line that I make will come out at a slightly forward angle. Um, I like the way that looks so that's how I will do this particular one. There it is with a 12 degree uh, bevel on it. You can still see the threads uh, from the shell. I'll bring it up to 10 next. There we are at uh, 10 degree. I'm going to probably go up to about 7.5 and, and see how that uh, looks. I uh, ended up taking this almost up to about 7.5, but I didn't want to go any higher. I want to have um, some thickness up here. Now what I have to do is go back over this secondary bevel with a 12 degree to make these lines match up better at the tip. There's still some things to do before heat treating, even though I've got the bevels basically ground in. And that's that I'm taking this time to mock up the handle and be sure that I've got the length and that the pommel fits. You can see that I um, kind of custom made a square hole in the pommel. Uh, and then the next thing I need to do is drill a hole through and through um, so that uh, um, I can lock the pommel in place with a pin. I'm not going to drive the pin all the way in, um, but the idea being that once this is fully assembled and I tap the pin through, um, that this will be basically bomb proof. Um, this will not come off unless there's been some sort of a catastrophic failure. 
The last step prior to heat treating is I have to finish this area out here in front of the guard uh, and stamp it um, because I won't be able to do that after the guard is soldered in place as well. So I'll clean this up uh, with a buffing wheel and we'll put our stamps on there. So you'll remember at the beginning of the video I tested a piece of this artillery shell and I tested the heat treat heating it to 1500 degrees for 20 minutes and I was able to get it to harden after quenching in oil. So I'm just going to do that again. I'm going to make a program here uh, and we'll have it heated up to 1500 degrees and we'll keep it there for 20 minutes and that should do it. So we'll open up our oven, put the blade in there and we'll start the heat treat. All right, here goes. Make it happen. Pow! And hopefully we won't get any... So here we are doing an RC hardness test after tempering and heat treat. Go one, two, three, and then we'll load. One, two, three, four, five. So, it actually tempered to 56. So, this 88 uh, millimeter artillery shell um, hardened to 56, which was even better than I got uh, with just the little shell fragment. Now what I need to do uh, is solder this guard in place. Um, it is secured with a pin, and it'll also be secured by the pressure of the handle. Um, but I like to do um, soldered guards on anything that I make like this. So we'll get started with that. So to do this, I use a low temperature silver solder and I protect the blade with a wet cloth. And I only heat it up as much as needed um, to melt our solder in there. Now what we have to do is glue up the handle. Um, have to, oh, take this out and, you know, stack the leather up and then put this back on. But I just wanted to show you that um, everything is mechanically secured so that it can't come apart. And at the end, what I'll do is I'll peen this uh, flat to further secure it. But, I mean, obviously there'll be epoxy in there too. Turning out pretty nice. Um, now uh, that I've got the handle shaped, it's time to actually finish the knife. And the first thing I'll need to do is put a convex edge on this. Now we'll do a little buffing here. Now we have to polish the leather. This is a special buffing compound meant for that. Let's see how it does here. Polishes it up real nice. See that? Handle's looking nice. Time to polish the bone just a little bit.
See, it shines up real nice. Now I'll put the uh, finishing touches on the blade. So there it is. Turned out pretty nice. And to think, just a little while ago that was a piece of an 88 millimeter shell. Not bad.